Hi, it's cold. It's cold where I am. It actually, I think, I think it actually got down to freezing last night. And before any of you guys that live up north are like laughing because it's actually not that cold to you down here, look, I don't care. You're a tough guy. I get it, but I'm cold. Just shut up. And besides, this is how you sound when you complain because it's 80 degrees in August. It goes both ways. Just shut up. Anyway, um, that's why I'm wearing my, my warm attire. Basically, I'm in my pajamas today. I don't care. I'm cold. I'm not a cold guy. We have a lot of um, plants out on our back patio, and for about three months out of the year, we have to bring them in so that they don't, you know, get too cold and freeze out there. So our, our downstairs now has become the jungle room, as it happens every year. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I want to talk about books. Uh, I think a lot of people assume that I read a lot more than I actually do, just because of the nature of what I what I do for a living and, and what I provide for you guys on the YouTubes. Um, and I, I probably do read a lot in terms of just like researching online. I, you know, I do a lot of that. I do a lot of, you know, web reading and whatnot, but I don't read a lot of books. I'm trying to change that, trying to be better about it. I was, I was saying at the beginning of the year, I'm going to try to read 20 pages a day, just 20 pages on whatever. And, and, you know, just kind of get through some books this year. And I failed at that, like I always do. Um, but I'm trying to get back into it. It's like this thing I kind of keep coming back to. And so I've got some books here that I want to just kind of like, uh, just kind of share with you what I'm reading and what I've been trying to read and, and what I would like to be reading and all that kind of stuff. So first of all, uh, back this last summer, I went to New York with my wife on a bit of an anniversary trip and we went to the Strand Bookstore, which is like this famous bookstore and it's like four stories tall and it's really cool. So, you know, while I was there, I like to buy things when I'm traveling just to be able to say, I bought this in New York. And, you know, I have, I have a couple of jackets that I bought on my honeymoon and in uh, Italy that I never really wear, but when I do, it's like, I bought this in Italy, you know. Uh, that's like the only time I ever buy anything so that I can just say that I bought it from somewhere else. But um, anyway, I bought like four or five books at the Strand while, while I was there, and I thought this would be an interesting book, especially given what I do for a living, you know, kind of doing videos where I'm trying to convince people of things. And um, it's called Winning Arguments by Stanley Fish, who's actually supposed to be a good... Uh, writer. He, he's got a few New York Times bestsellers. But I gotta say, couldn't finish it. Um, I have this thing where I, uh, I start reading a book and I'm like, no, I have to finish this book. I have to finish this book. And, and I, I hate it. I'm just like hating this book and I can't bring myself to, uh, to keep reading it. And then my wife is like, just find another book if, it's, if you hate it so much. Just find another book. This is a terrible book. I'm just gonna come out and say it. This is my book review. Horrible book. First of all, it's called Winning Arguments. And the reason why I thought this would be good because, um, you know, especially this year being a political, you know, election year and whatnot, um, not that I care so much about winning arguments, but I wanna be able to create effective arguments. And, and not even political, but like on my channel, I'm always, you know, making some kind of point or I'm trying to get some idea across. And I wanna find the right rhetorical devices to do that that aren't, straining credibility, that kind of thing. You know, I want to be good at what I do. Um, you know, if I'm making a video that's trying to make a point, I want to make it well, you know? So I want to, I want to kind of read up on that. This did not do that. First of all, it's called Winning Arguments. I read 100 pages into it, and literally there was not one, <laughs> there was nothing about how to win any kind of particular argument. It wasn't about, uh, it, I got nothing out of it. It was basically a large treatise on why argument is important basically it was I, I read this far into it and basically all i got out of it was um that argument is something that we have to do as people and you have to embrace it it was basically arguing against the you know leaving of arguments like people are always like i don't want to argue about it or whatever but this is basically saying you know argument is what makes the world go around and you need to embrace it which is an interesting point i guess but that's not that's not what the book is. That's not what the title says. The title says winning arguments, what works and doesn't work in politics, the bedroom, the courtroom, and the classroom. None of that's in there. None of it. It's a totally misleading title. And it's impossible to read. Let me just read a segment from you or from, from this for you. Okay. And, and this, th here's my, this is my gauge, by the way, because again, I'm, I'm not like the most prolific reader in the world, but my wife is like, she goes through books two or three a month. It's insane. 
and she has a, a master's degree in English Lit. Like, she has read everything of Charles Dickens and has written dissertations on Dickens and Jane Austen. Like, she is far more literate than I am. Far more. So I read this passage to her, and I was like, is it just me, or is this really hard to follow? And I read this to her, and she was like, yeah, that is awful. Please stop reading that book. A passage, page 96 of Winning Arguments. Okay. Um, he was talking about something. It doesn't matter what. Um, in this vision, parentheses, which comes down to us from the sophists Georgius and Praetorius, in parentheses, the, quote, constituted power of utterances, unquote, is wide-ranging, for in the absence of foundational truths, values, and ethical obligations, something must supply a simulacrum of the essences that elude our epistemological grasp, and that is something which is discourse, speech, rhetoric, and argument, which, says Charland, is, quote, productive of the very categories by which the world and indeed the self are understood, unquote. That was one sentence. You following any of that? I'm not following any of that. Every, like, like, just paragraphs, pages long paragraphs of that. And I'm trying, I'm like reading this and my mind is going off somewhere else. I'm thinking about the stuff I got to get at the store. And I'm just like, this is awful. So a hundred pages in, on the advice of my, my very more literate than me wife, I stopped reading that. That, this book is garbage. Don't read it. Okay, that's my book review. I moved on from that to another book that I actually did not buy at the Strand Bookstore. Uh, I bought it over Amazon a while back, and for some reason I'm just now getting around to reading it. But it's called Bullshit Jobs. Um, you're going to hear the heater, and I'm not going to turn it off because I'm cold. Did I mention that? Uh, so this is called Bullshit Jobs, and I'm actually enjoying this a lot more. You know, let me go back to this for just a second. Here's my problem with this. Rant. Here's my problem with this. Um, and this is something that I, I, I talk about in terms of what I do on my channel quite a bit. He could be making the most brilliant points in the world in this book, but it is unreadable to anyone who doesn't have maybe a PhD in rhetoric or something. And my whole point with what I do is no matter how brilliant you are or no matter how great the points you're making might be, if you can't communicate that in a way that other people can grasp and understand, um, you're masturbating. That's all it is. You're just masturbating. You're wasting your time and, and nobody's getting anything out of it. You are failing miserably at the thing you are set out to do, and that is to make a point to other people or, or get something across that people want to, could, could learn from. And he's failing miserably at this. I don't know if that kind of, you know, talking, if he talks like that in person, I can't imagine, like I would punch him in the face immediately. But like, to me, that just comes off as, let me show you how smart I am. Okay, great, you're smart. I'm getting nothing out of this. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay. This one is the opposite of that. This one uh, is written by uh, the best-selling author of Debt, which is another book that I really would like to read, uh, David Graeber. This is a fun book. It's basically making the argument, <laughs> argument, it's making the point that so many jobs that exist in corporate America today um, don't have to exist. And if they went away, nobody, like the world would keep going as if nothing ever happened. Um, and he makes, there was this one guy in here, just for an example, who worked for a, a contractor of a contractor of a military subcontractor. And his job is somebody at a military barracks had to get moved literally from one room to the very next room was he had to drive two hours to fill out paperwork to move the computer from one room to the other and then drive back home. Like, he had, his job was total bullshit. And so that's, that's basically what this is talking about. And I, I, I feel for this because, I mean, look, I, I worked for 12 years at a, at a newspaper and not that I felt my job was bullshit, but there was a lot of bullshit involved in my job that made the doing of the job very difficult, much more difficult than it needed to be. Um, and also less productive, and it also made it to where the quality of the work went down. Um, and it's something I rail against all the time, and then, you know, this is a big, huge part of why I, I, I chose to make the leap and do the YouTube thing instead of, you know, being a cog in a wheel uh, or in a machine at, uh, you know, some desk job and just going nowhere and putting nothing of value into the world that I could see anyway. So, um, that th this book is resonating with me. Obviously, I just got started on it. I'm only about 50 pages in. Really enjoying it, though. But um, 
before I jump into these, there is a book I've been wanting to read for a while, and I've had so many people asking me to do a video on this subject, but I didn't do it yet because I wanted to read the book first, and it's, a, it's the book Biocentrism. I've had so many people asking me to do a video on this topic. Uh, you can see the dust on here. I've had this book for a while. I've just never gotten around to reading it, and it's terrible, and I don't want to do a video on it until I read the book. Um, I don't know why. Normally, I'm fine doing a, a video on something that I've only done research for online, but for some reason, this one, I really want to actually read the book. I find it interesting, and um, yeah, I haven't, haven't had a chance to read it yet. I'm probably going to try to get to this next after this one. Um, but doing what I do, I, I just I get presents in the mail from time to time, and I've had some people send me some books, and I want to shout them out because um, writing a book is hard. Some of these are self-published, and some of them are published through, say, smaller publishers. But um, either way, if you got a book made, good for you, man. And so some of these guys are supporters on Patreon. This one is from um, Paul Chalice, but he goes by PG Chalice, called Benjamin Sorrow. Uh, he sent this my way. And um, for those who follow me on Patreon, um, a few weeks back, you know, about a month or so ago, when I did the cryogenics video, I've got a novel that I had worked on a long time ago. I got maybe four or five chapters in and I never quite finished it. Um, but I shared the first chapter of that novel because it's about somebody who um, reawakens in the future after being cryogenically frozen and, um, or cryonically frozen. And so um, because of that, Paul sent me his book. He was like, hey, I just want to encourage you to keep doing it. And, you know, I did mine and he didn't ask me to share this or anything, but I'm going to because it was nice of him. And, and to Paul, um, if he is watching this, I'm, I have no idea when I would ever get a chance to read this because I'm so far behind on books. But if I can, I will absolutely do it. I tend to read more when I'm um, traveling and on vacation for obvious reasons. But um, another one that I got was from W.S. Jenkins. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure this person. I don't, have, I don't even know if it's a, a guy or a girl. Um, Wellborn, I guess is his last name. Um, or Wellborn Jenkins. Anyway, it's called the Cap, Cap Sci Effect. Looks like a sci-fi novel. Um, and uh, yeah, I just want to give him a shout out because he sent me this. And again, no idea when I'm ever going to get a chance to read it. Guys, I'm so slow at reading and I apologize. And I, I, I appreciate you guys sending me though. I will say really quickly though, there was a book that one of my Patreon supporters sent me. Um, it's been a while now, earlier this year, and I'm actually doing a video on the, the subject of his book. Um, uh, is it not this coming Monday? It's going to be the Monday after that, so I guess the last Monday of this month. Um, I found it to be an interesting subject. I'm not going to spoil it here, but it's, um, it has to do sort of, sort of with cryonics, sort of uh, like waking up in the future kind of thing, but... Um, not really. It's it's a it's a thought experiment, and I, I found the I found the subject interesting, and I hadn't heard anybody say anything like it before. Um, I don't know how much stock I put in it exactly. It's, it's but but it's it's interesting. It's enough. For, it's interesting enough for me to do a video about. So uh, so it happens, guys. I do actually read books from time to time when people send them to me. Um, this one I wanted to uh, look. Okay, so you guys probably many of you know who Fraser Kane is, who does the YouTube videos for. Uh, Universe Today. He runs the podcast. Excellent guy. We've done a, a collaboration or two. Um, and he reached out recently and he asked if I would be interested in uh, taking a look at his book. He read a book that was coming out. And I was like, absolutely, man. Send it my way. So he sent it and I opened this book up or I opened a, the, the package. I just want you to look at this. Th look at this thing. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Viewing the Cosmos, Everything You Need to Know to Become an Am Amateur Astronomer. This book is gorgeous. And it's got that cool, um, I mean, you can't tell, but it's got, it's got that cool, like, um, soft-feeling paper on here. I don't know, it's very touchy, very um, tactile. But you look, look inside of this thing, if I can hold it up correctly here. It's got beautiful, it's beautiful pictures and illustrations of the things that they're talking about. And, I mean, this is kind of like a, a really well-done textbook. I mean, this might be more for the younger folks. And there's little activities and experiments you can do in here, and they talk about telescopes. And, I mean, it's just, it's an absolutely gorgeous book. I had no idea this was coming my way. And I really want to give a huge shout-out to Fraser 
for getting this made. It is absolutely blew me away. This, my expectations were that I would get just a, a book with words in it, like all the other books. But this, this is absolutely amazing. And um, I don't know if this is actually out yet. <laughs> uh, I forgot to ask. It, it might be out. It might not. If it is, I'll I'll try to look it up and put a put a little um, link down in the description or something. But Fraser, dude, awesome! This is so beautiful. I'm I'm just so impressed. Anyway, um, so those are all the books in my life right now, and I just kind of wanted to share that with you and um, let you know just kind of how I am with books. I'm not too good. I'm trying to be better. But uh, is there a book you're reading right now that you're totally in love with? Is there a book that you read this year that totally blew your mind that you think everybody should read? Let's let's talk about that down in the comments and share and uh, maybe we can all run into something new that we didn't know about that was fun. Um, but anyway, more to come. Uh, I'm working on a video for this next Monday that will be, um, uh, it's going to be very different. Uh, I haven't done like a sketch intro for a while and this is like a sketch intro on, on steroids. I haven't, I haven't really done one this far out maybe ever. <laughs> it's it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm kind of shooting that right now. The video coming out on Thursday, if you're on Patreon, you've already seen it, because if you're on Patreon, you get early access to stuff, because now that I'm actually ahead of things, you can see things early. Um, hey, buddy. My dog wanted to get involved over here. Um, but anyway, no, the, the video for this Thursday is is a lot of fun. I'm curious to see how people will will take to it. I it I, I think it's I think it's a good video when I made it and I find myself watching it over and over again. Like I've watched it three or four times since I posted it on Patreon. I'm like, I hope this does well. Anyway, that's all the news. That's what's going on and um, I'll leave you guys with that. This is the Joe Scott TMI channel. This has been too much information. If you are watching and you think this is my regular channel, it is not. So please don't leave me a comment about it. If you want to uh, subscribe to this though, this is kind of what I do. I just talk all freestyle and whatnot. Um, please do subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.